morning, everybody. Good morning. Everybody move in just a little bit so you can hear. It's wonderful to see you. We're, one of the songs that we're singing this morning is called Where We'll Never Grow Old. I asked Jim why he didn't put Where We'll Never Grow Cold. <laughs> we asked for no rain and there's not a cloud in the sky. Amen. Amen. No what a great day. What a great day. What a, what a heritage that we have standing on this spot where the original church was and the folks who were faithful to the Lord back a hundred years ago, how we're grateful to them are grateful for them and uh, grateful to all their family and everyone uh, who has carried on in their legacy. And we're just uh, uh, great to see everybody. Thank you for being here. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, early this morning, we just thank you, Lord, that Lord, there's coming a sunrise <coughs> when we'll never grow old. Thank you, Lord, there's coming a day when we'll never part. Thank you, Lord, there's coming that day when we see you split the eastern sky. And Lord, we look forward to that day. Lord, we look forward to that, but we look to the past. And this is the day when we look to the past. Lord, you've told us that we're not to dwell on it, but God, we know that we stand on other shoulders. And Father, we thank you for uh, the people who have gone before us, the saints of old, and we thank you for them. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you'd be with this brief time of worship this morning, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Jim, come let's sing. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really happy about this. See a lot of my old friends here, and uh, I was thinking coming over there, every time I drive over the hill, I see this grave right here. My dad's, and I choke up usually and think about it. He told me in 1928, him and my papa all come across right here from Greenbrier and the sun was going down over Bluff Mountain. And I wonder a lot of times what in the world was he thinking about? Did he have any clue what his future was holding and what my grandpa was thinking? And if they had only known, especially my grandpa, what was going to happen in Pigeon Forge. Thank God both of them lived to see the new church. And my grandpa would walk out this road right here to this church. And one time he was late. Well, he didn't show up to church. And people got concerned about him. And lo and behold, when he went home, he had a place right over here that he prayed. And he had prayed all the way through his the service. And he was a great Christian. And I come over here and pick up golf balls a lot. And I know just about where everybody in this graveyard is buried and I don't necessarily visit with them but I sure think about all the uncles and aunts and the cousins and all of my friends that's laid to rest here and gosh how I miss all the of them and I know they'd be proud to hear us sing in the garden Ooh. I come to the garden alone while the dew still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me I am His As 
we tarry there, none other has ever known. I changed the program just a little bit. The pride of my life is Turner Whaley, because I've got a whole bunch of other grandchildren. And someday he'll probably be in the pulpit, I think, because he don't know about that yet. And he's got a song that I think is very fitting for this and hope you all enjoy. Someday when my last line is written, someday when I draw my last breath, when my last words on earth have been spoken, and my lips are sealed in death. Don't look on my cold form in pity. Don't think of me as one dead. It'll just be the house I once lived in. My spirit by then will have fled. I'll have finished my time here allotted. But I won't be in darkness alone I will have heard from heaven The summits to come on home And when my body is in the grave Don't think that I'll be there For I won't be dead but living in a place Jesus went to prepare And after all is said and done Know that my last earnest prayer Is that my loved ones be ready To meet with me Uh, I'm sorry about that never grow old. Uh, <laughs> uh, I changed that a little bit. I'm sorry, preacher. Paige, we're going to sing How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to do is honor these people. Uh, I know a lot of our celebration today is for the younger folks that's with us today. But laws and mercy. Uh, well, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Bill? We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truth in God's word He has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be.
grateful for Brother Cope, the longest uh, tenured pastor of First Baptist Church, Pigeon mm -hmm. Forge, and he's going to bring a brief message to us right now, Preacher Cope. First, let me share something with you that I think you would enjoy. A book was published in 1988. Now, you can go by the church library, or perhaps some of you have a copy of it, and it has the best complete history of the church and also of the cemetery here. And I think if you went by and looked through it, you could find the answer to perhaps anything you would like. And so the title is Faith of Our Fathers. And we published it in 1958, and it has the total absolute history with the names of all of the people in the history going back to this cemetery and throughout the other parts of our church. So if you will look, you will find the answer to anything about any of your loved ones and members of your family of the years in the past. So I've wanted to bring that and share that with you and let you know about that book. And now I have a brief message today that I would like to share with you. I want to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not go before them which are asleep. For if the Lord himself, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be forever with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. How gloriously wonderful these words as we're standing in this sacred and holy place. And now I have a very brief message for you today. We are gathering here this morning and are standing on holy ground in loving remembrance of those who have gone before us. We will be giving thanks for those dear souls who had the faith and vision to be led by the Lord to go through the process of starting Pigeon Forge Baptist Church and the cemetery that surrounded it at that time, the church building there, and as it is written, surrounded by the church. Many of the original groups of founders, along with our loved ones, lie here in this sacred ground in mortal sleep, but are now walking the golden streets of heaven with our precious Lord. For 100 years, the members of this church have been living by faith. Many are climbing up the mountain and others have crossed Jordan to the sweet by and by. As we picture names and faces and we think about their lives, our spirits must be filled with thanksgiving. Their walk to heaven led the way for others to follow. As I stand on the soil of the original church, 
I finally recall the melodies of, re of those old gospel songs, the earnest prayers of the charter members, and the tears of joy and sorrow in so many lives. They were all walking to heaven. They led the way. They would talk about often all the rewards in the kingdom of God. They put eternal life into terms we could relate to. They could envision themselves in heaven. Their labors and sacrifices shall not go in vain. Their efforts build a church of believers that has stood for 100 years. Their efforts blaze a, tra a trail for us to follow. Their rewards both now and forever were eternal life in heaven and leaving a house of God for those like us who came behind. And how glorious and wonderful. As a young boy, I loved that building at that place. They had trials and sufferings in this life, but the blessings outweighed the difficulties. The rewards that count, that are the lost, that last forever. Eternal joy is with God forever. As God would call His children home, one by one, beginning with the home going of Edna Davenport, a five months old baby girl born on September the 14th, 1914, who died on February the 26th. Isn't that amazing? The first one to die and to be buried. I'm going to read those lines of my history again. Three. As God would call His children home one by one, beginning with the homegoing of Edna Davenport, a five-month-old baby girl born on September the 14th, 1914, who died February the 26th, 1950, from crib death. I do not understand crib death. She was the first one to be buried in the church seminary, cemetery, the first churchyard. Carolyn Barnes Lonas was the last one to be buried in the church cemetery on Wednesday, September the 3rd, 2014. I have been honored to walk with many of these graves with grieving families. Six of them have been members of my immediate family. Luther Brackens, chairman of the cemetery committee, tells me there are 769 graves here now. Our loved ones, our Christian brothers and sisters, and our church Past church family all face the eastern sky awaiting the trumpet call to rise again in glory. Their walk was filled with trust, with faith, with hope, with steadfastness, and with love for their Savior and their family that they knew would meet again in heaven one year one time to be parted no more forever. We are here this morning to walk in their footprints, to walk to heaven to be with our Lord. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we know we're standing on holy ground, but we know also that our loved ones shall arise when the trumpet shall sound and the graves shall be opened, and those who are in Christ shall rise the first, and we shall be joined together again in the glorious heaven that you've prepared 
we shall face death no more. We shall be together no forever to be never parted again. So today as we're standing on holy ground, we worship you and praise you that when the trumpets shall sound, these graves shall be opened and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we shall be together again forever and forever. And we praise you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I love that man. <clears throat> He's meant so much to this community and this church. And you nearly got another one right here. <laughs> no. I love Dale. He's wonderful. And he's the right man for the job right now. And I really appreciate it. Now I've got to say too, Preacher Cope and I stand together in a community course. So, and we'll be singing at the First Baptist Church, won't we, this year. So I invite everybody to come. I changed. I wanted to sing because he lives. But I'd rather sing Precious Memories. And the good thing about leading the music, you can sing what you want. So I hope we enjoy it. And I'd like to thank everybody again for coming out here and honoring all these people in the church. And uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Okay? Precious memories of seen angels sing from somewhere to my soul.
Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you for being here. We'll reconvene at 10 at the church. Have a great day. Oh, hold up. Just a, just a second. When we were in the old church building over here, and I was a boy about this side, I was sitting there during the sermon while the preacher was preaching, and I kept feeling something crawling back and forth across me. And I looked down, and I had a great big red wasp about that long crawling. I didn't have an undershirt on, crawling back and forth. And I got up and walked out. And when the service was over, the preacher went like this. And he ran up to me and said, now you listen to me. Don't you ever get up while I'm in this bed. Now you know it all. <laughs>